In today's video, I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite sketching techniques. All you need for it is a fountain pen, a water brush, a pencil, and a heavy-duty paper towel. I really love the fact that this method is so compact and yet so versatile, allowing for a very large range of effects with very limited means. Okay, let's talk about the materials I'll be working with. This is a Noodler's Ahab, one of my absolutely favorite pens for drawing. First of all, it has very good ink capacity, and I like the fact that it's clear, allowing you to see exactly how much ink you have left in the pen. Let's open this up. It comes with this converter, which holds a lot of ink, but if you want to carry an entire bottle of ink in your pen, you can remove the converter and fill the entire back of this thing with an eyedropper. Okay, so you can't fill an entire bottle of ink in there, but I believe it's something like three milliliters, which is quite a lot. Noodlers also sells refillable, sealable cartridges, which are fantastic for traveling, and I believe they're the only company that does this. Let's put this pen back together. Now, while the original nib on this pen is perfectly usable and quite good, you can replace it with a number six Ultraflex nib from Fountain Pen Revolution, which makes it a lot better. Because this pen is designed for flex and has a very generous ebonite feed, the performance of this nib is exceptional. Let's do some figure eights. Look at that flex. And not really pressing down a lot. Let's work a little bit quicker. And you can see that the ebonite feed in this pan absolutely keeps up with no railroading at all. So uh, this is one of my recommendations for a cheap flex option, a Noodler's Ahab with a number six ultra flex nib from Fountain Pen Revolution. Really great combination. Though again, the original nibs on the Noodler's are perfectly good. They just don't flex quite as much. They require a little bit more pressure and perhaps they're a little tiny bit scratchier. Okay, now for the water brush. I'm using one by, made by Pentel. They come in three sizes. There's a small, a medium, and a large, but I really think you only need to carry around one for quick sketching. Uh, these things are really pointy and actually give you quite a, little, quite a lot of control. This technique will work with any fountain pen and any water brush, but you do have to be careful with your ink selection because this technique will not work with every ink. The thing is, Inks come in a range of water resistance, going from low water resistance all the way to completely waterproof. You need to carefully select an ink that is high in water resistance, but not completely waterproof. If you go to a site like Goulet Pens, which is where I buy most of my fountain pen supplies, you'll see that the inks are rated for water resistance. For this sketch, I chose Noodler's Brown, which as you can see by the rating is water resistant, but again, not completely waterproof. You can see here in these tests that when water is dripped into the ink, it will create a touch of residue, a wash, but doesn't completely wash away the lines. That's exactly what we're looking for. This is pretty important because if I use an ink with very low water resistance, the lines will simply wash away. This, for instance, is an ink made by Pilot. This is uh, Iroshizuku. And because it is very low in water resistance, the lines are going to simply fuzz out. Conversely, if I use a ink with very high water resistance or completely waterproof, you can see that it leaves very little residue. What I want is, again, something that's high in water resistance but not entirely waterproof. So this is my Noodler's Brown, and you can see that it creates a really nice wash, and yet the lines still retain their edge, their crispness. This is exactly the quality that I'm looking for for this particular sketching technique. The technique is quite simple. Uh, let's do a basic value scale here. The idea is that you want to shade only the very darkest part of the drawing. So let's put a little bit of hatch line here. Let's go a little bit darker here. Like this. And then the rest of the value, all the way from white to mid-tone is going to be done using your ink wash. Now obviously, the longer you wait for the ink to dry, the less residue there's going to be. So in this case, I'm waiting a couple of seconds. Let's just see what happens. Okay, and then if I want to go darker, I'll wait for the wash to dry entirely, and then I can go over it again with my ink. This technique is quite simple, but requires a little bit of thinking ahead. Let's sketch in a sphere that looks like this. And then let's indicate where our shadows are. 
here's a body shadow, here's a highlight, and also I'm going to indicate the cast shadow. All right, uh, let's outline the sphere with my pen. Now, obviously, because this is a flex pen, I can use pressure to vary the line quality. I recognize that the darker the line, the thicker the line, the longer it's going to take to dry. Um, all right, now I'm going to start shading a little bit, but you only want to shade the darker parts of the shadow. On a sphere, where is that going to be? It's going to be something called the core shadow. That's going to be a darker value that runs along the light break here. By the way, if you need an explanation of core shadows, body shadows, cast shadows, and their various properties, I'll leave a link to a tutorial down below where I explain these things in a lot more detail than I can get into now. Okay, so I'm going to hatch a little bit of the darker values on my sphere, which is going to be right about here. Now, um, I have to be careful because I've put down a really thick gushing line and I don't want to smear my drawing. Okay, so what I'm putting down right now is the darker part of the shadow. And then there's also going to be a darker value underneath the sphere and obviously in the cast shadow. So let's do that as well. Not only when I'm sketching, I'm free to move my paper around, change the angle, but because I'm recording this, I'm trying to not rotate the paper. Okay, so I've hatched the cast shadow and it's going to be a little bit darker here. Let's put in a little bit of a darker value. Okay, now before I need to, before I add the wash, I'm going to wait for this sphere to dry a little bit uh, because if I start applying ink right away, it's going to wash away my drawing. So let's wait a couple of minutes. Let's add a little bit of a darker value here and then we'll apply a layer of ink wash to this. Okay, now that I've let the ink dry a little bit, I'm going to go in with my water brush and put in my midtones. Let's go over the shadow area. And you can see because our ink is resistant to water, but not completely, it creates a little residue which creates the wash effect. Let's do the same thing in the cast shadow here. Now, if I want to go darker, I can wait for my wash to dry and go over it with the pen one more time. However, here's a neat trick. I can use my pen as an ink reservoir. So I'll take a little bit of ink from my pen with my brush and then I can use it to go even darker. So now my pen goes from being a pen to being an ink reservoir. Which is why having a pen with a lot of ink capacity is pretty useful. Okay, so I can go over it again and make my core shadow a little bit darker. And again, because our ink is semi-water resistant, the lines stay crisp and don't wash away, giving you a really nice pen and ink and ink wash effect. So there's a general approach to the technique. Uh, let me show you what this looks like in practice. I'm going to do a longer drawing. I'm going to speed it up and narrate as I go. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start the drawing with a pencil. I'm using a 2 millimeter clutch filled with, I believe that's a 2B lead in there. I don't always pencil in my drawings. Um, I think sometimes when you start directly with a pen and ink, your drawing, though it might not be quite as accurate, uh, is more spontaneous in terms of line. I think something that happens when you do a tight pencil drawing and draw over it, you end up tracing over your pencil lines, which makes them a little bit drier. 
However, this is a complicated subject, and I certainly don't want to mess up in the middle of the demo, so I'm penciling this in. Um, plus, uh, penciling allows you to make compositional decisions, proportional decisions, that are a little bit difficult to make while you're doing the pen and ink drawing. Um, so, penciling kind of frees up your brain to focus just on the line quality and make your drawing better. Um, Make sure you're using a, either a 2B or a slightly lighter pencil because if you start going into 4B or 6B, um, those lines will be a little bit harder to erase later. Okay, so now that I'm done with the pencil, I'm going to start going in with my Noodler's Ahab filled with Noodler's Brown. Um, again, this is a flex pen, so I'm trying to play with the line variation here, pressing down, trying to work thick and thin. Again, another main advantage of having a flex pen is the fact that you can get line variation. Um, I'm trying to emphasize depth, but also, look, thick and thin lines look a lot better in a drawing to look more, they look more expressive. Uh, this is the main advantage of having a flex fountain pen, or really any fountain pen, above a micron. Um, and I think really this is what makes fountain pens worth it. Uh, they are more expensive than microns or felt tip pens. Um, they're a pain in the ass to maintain quite often. They leak sometimes. However, just having that little bit of line variation makes all of it worthwhile. Um, now, this pen is a little bit of a gusher, uh, which actually for this technique is good. Uh, having a little bit of extra ink down on the paper will allow me to make my washes darker. So if you're using a pen that dries, uh, that writes a little bit drier, let's say like a Twisby Eco, which I also really love, uh, you'll find the washes are a little bit lighter. But you won't have to wait as long for the next step, which is using your water brush uh, to put in the washes. Okay, now I'm going to start putting in my darker hatching. Again, keep in mind that you have to think ahead when you're doing this technique. I'm only going to put hatching where I'm going to have the very darkest values, in the darkest shadows. Everything else is going to be rendered using the ink wash. Keep in mind that you can always go darker if the drawing is too light. However, if you've made things too dark, it's going to be impossible to go lighter. So I'm going to build my values little by little. Quite often I put down a layer of hatch, then I alternate between hatching and using my water brush. So I'm going to go over my washes with, with my water brush, see how dark they go, let the drawing dry, and then go back into it again if I need to go darker. All right, so almost done with hatching. The next step is to wait a little bit for the ink to dry, maybe about five to ten minutes, depending on what kind of effect I'm looking for. Um, and now I'm going to start applying my layer of wash. In this case, I waited about ten minutes for the ink to dry before going in with my water brush. Had I gone in sooner, it would result in a drawing with darker washes and fuzzier lines. Had I waited longer, the lines would have been sharper and the wash lighter. This is just one of the ways you can affect the look of your drawing just by varying the wait time. Of course, the wait time is also highly affected by the kind of paper you're using. Here I'm using a relatively cheap drawing paper that is not made for aqueous media. If you use a multimedia paper or even watercolor paper, you'll get different results. You can see that I'm going over the hatching in the shadows first, which deepens the value, and then using the residual ink on the brush to create lighter shadows. And then, as there is less and less ink on the brush, subtle halftones and details. This technique takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of thinking ahead. I recommend that you start off by putting down fairly light hatches, because the wash will make them darker. Remember, you can always go darker later if your drawing is too light, but if you've accidentally gone too dark, there's just no way to make it lighter again. All right, finishing up here, putting in little subtle halftones, a little bit of detail in the teeth, and then I'm going to finish up the drawing with my water brush. I'm going to wait a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to use the pen, not as a pen, but as an ink reservoir. You can see I'm dipping my water brush into the back of the nib, and then going in with some darker washes to add accents, larger area of black. Um, just one additional technique that makes this method incredibly versatile. Okay, I hope you found this little demo useful. Again, this is a really great sketching technique requiring very limited means, just two tools really, to create what I think is a pretty striking effect. This will be very good for urban sketching or landscape drawing, or even doing quick figure studies. Perhaps for longer, more refined work, an actual brush with actual ink would be better, but that would require a water reservoir, a palette, an actual brush, etc., etc. So, for my money, there's really no better compact sketching method, and I hope all of you out there will give this a try.